This is my first tutorial. Uh, I'm really excited to do some crochet with you today. Uh, it's been my favorite cathartic art practice lately, especially in this time. I've been working on a blanket, so I thought a crochet tutorial would be a really great way to start off uh, with you guys. So I'll just talk about my materials first and then I'll, we'll just get right into it. Also, just a little disclaimer, I'm probably not going to be editing this video too, too much. I just kind of like to get it up there as quick as possible. So apologies for <laughs> any dead air or lulls. Uh, there may be some mistakes in between as well, but it'll just be a little bit more authentic that way. So here we go. So the first thing I'm going to tell you about is this crochet hook. I'm using a size 4.5. This is just a regular metal hook. Uh, I use all sorts of hooks. I like this size for creating scarves and sweaters and blankets. I have a blanket right here and I am using this size hook for this entire blanket. It's all similar size wool as well. Uh, so it is like just regular worsted wool and it creates this lovely chunkiness because the stitches aren't too, too tight on it. Uh, I'll also show you a smaller one just so you can have an idea. Um, of how they look so you can see here there's a bit of holes in it um, it's a little loose uh, but it's really nice this is just a basic granny square it's really nice for creating a blanket or a scarf uh, obviously if you were doing a stuffed animal or something you would want to use a much smaller hook with this type of yarn just so you didn't have any holes so the stuffing wouldn't poke through but that's not what we're doing today uh, I use the size 4.5 hook a lot because I use worsted wool a lot. Um, this is kind of what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to be showing you how to start off something and then how to work your way up uh, doing like this would end up being probably a scarf or something or the start of a blanket or squares. Uh, so this is what we're going to be doing today. And this is all single crochet as well. So we're just going to do something really basic just to get you started. And then hopefully I'll be doing some more tutorials in the future. So that way you can see a few different things to make. I think my next one may be a great square I'm just obsessed with them uh, so that may be the next thing but let's just get started with this one don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves so I already told you about the hook so I'm just using regular worsted wool so this is 100% wool which means it's fairly easy to tear uh, and um, I just I really love wool I love how it smells I love how it feels um, so that's what we're going to be using today. It's also nice that it can rip uh, so that if you don't have scissors right next to you, it's easy to go from one color to the next. So let's begin. The first thing that we're going to do is create a loop. So all crocheting really is, is yarning over and pulling that yarn through loops. And depending on how many times you yarn over or how many loops you pull through makes the stitch. So it's a fairly simple concept. So the way we begin is with a slip knot. Uh, so in order to do that, we're just going to cross the two pieces of yarn over and pull a loop through like that. Um, we do this type of knot so that when you put it onto the hook, you can just pull on it and it'll get tight. I'll just show you that one more time. So just pull it out. So we are just going to yarn. We're going to make a loop. Then we're going to pull the yarn through the loop. It doesn't matter if you pull the tail through the loop or the long end of the yarn. It only matters for when you put it on the hook because if you use the tail, you'll obviously have to pull on the tail to make it tight. Or if you use the long end of the yarn, you pull that to make it tight. So when you're pulling it, just make sure there's enough leeway so that the yarn will slide up and down the hook. Otherwise, you're going to have a really difficult time pulling the yarns through the loops because each loop we make now, that's what we're pulling the yarn through. So obviously you want it to be loose enough so that you can pull yarn through the loop. So now that we have our slip knot on there, uh, it's going to be very important to pay attention to which end you are using. Uh, so when I do this, I take my end and I put it to the side or I usually even hold it. Uh, so that way you're not accidentally using that end to crochet with because if you do, you're going to run out of yarn very quickly. So I'm just gonna hold it out of the way here while I use this end. So this is the end that has all of the yarn on it. So that's what we want to crochet from. So like I said, all crocheting is yarning over and pulling through loops. So yarning over is when you pull the yarn from back to front over the hook. 
and you want to do it back to front. If you do it front to back, you're going to have a hard time uh, pulling it through the loop and it's going to start twisting all around your hook, uh, which we don't want. Uh, so we're going to yarn back to front called yarn over and then we're going to pull that through the loop that we just made. So this is when it's you're going to notice that if you pulled that loop really tight on your hook, you're probably having a lot of trouble right now pulling it through. But no need to worry, you can start over um, or you can try and pull that loop uh, a little bit looser. So let me just start over there. So now I'm just back with that slip knot. So if you pulled it really tight, uh, just see if you can loosen it just by pulling on the knot. Uh, so that way you have a bit of room and don't worry about the tension um, too much. By tension, I mean how tight you're holding it. It doesn't matter if it's super even for your first one. We just want to get the concept down. Uh, so I have a little bit of space here. So that way, when I yarn over and pull it through the loop, it's quite easy. It's not too, too difficult. So I keep a nice amount of space in between all of my stitches. So that way I'm not fighting with it to crochet. I like to crochet very loosely um, and make it easier. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how I hold my yarn. Don't feel like you need to hold it this way, especially not right away. This way is an easy way to create tension, especially it's most useful if you're doing stuffed animals because obviously you're stuffing them with something. You don't want that poking through, so you don't really want any holes, especially if you're giving it to children or you're washing them a lot. Um, so the way I hold my yarn is I wrap it around my pinky and then over my front finger. So when I do that, you can already see I have a really, I'm able to really pay attention to the tension I have and change it. Um, and I can hold it tight. It keeps my loops really stationary on my hook. I, I like that a lot. My grandmother told me, she taught me how to do this when I was about 12 uh, and it stuck with me ever since. So there's, and you're gonna see as well, um, if you watch other people crochet, Everyone holds it a little differently. Everyone has their own way of doing things and whatever works for you is the best way. So when people are starting out, they usually hold it like this. That's a super easy way. I find that a bit difficult just because I find I need to hold my yarn with multiple fingers as I'm going and you'll see that later. Uh, it'll get a little bit more complicated. So even if you wanted to start out and just wrap it around and even just hold it, that way you have something else just holding onto the yarn. I just find it much easier later on, but whatever works for you. So if you find this way, I know lots of people that only use it this way and that works for them, um, whatever is most convenient. I'm gonna wrap it around this way just because uh, this is what's easiest for me and I'm gonna end up doing it anyway um, through the video. So we have our first two uh, loops done. So this is called chaining, if I haven't mentioned that already. So we're creating a chain and the chain is what we're building off of to create uh, something uh, when we crochet. So we have two on here already, so we're just gonna keep going and we're gonna do about, do about 10 or 15, just so you have a, a nice amount to work off of as you go further and it's, it'll be easier to see your rows that way as well. So I have two, so I'm gonna do uh, some more. So we're just gonna yarn over and pull that yarn through the loop. We're gonna yarn over again and pull that through the next loop. And we're just gonna keep doing that. So already we have a pretty nice chain here. So each one of these holes is a stitch. And that's what we're gonna go back into uh, with the next row. So I'm gonna do it slow a couple more times and then I'm just gonna make uh, my chain. So we yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull it through. So now we have a pretty nice looking chain going on here. We have seven, including the one on my hook. So. All right. So let's count how many I have now. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
So we have 15, including the one on my hook. Um, so each one of these little holes is a stitch. So now we have 15, so I'm gonna show you how to do single crochet first. It's the base of all crochet, basically. Um, so we're gonna start out with that one and then we'll move on from there in future tutorials. So in order to start, um, so 15, that's how many we want. So we're gonna chain once and chain twice because uh, this is going to start our next row. So it's kind of hard to see right now, um, but if you can kind of see the shape, because we're going to now go backwards. So we just came left to right to make the chain. Now we're going to go right to left to make the first row. So I just chained twice. So we're going to go back one, two. We're going to go into the third one here. It might be a little hard to see. Uh, so now we're going to do our first single crochet. So uh, for starting out uh, with chains, I only I like to just go under the top loop that's there. I find it much easier than going through two. Um, for the next row, I usually like to go under two loops, but we'll get there in a minute. So we're going to go un into this one. And as you can see, so I have the first piece of yarn just over my hook there. And we're gonna yarn over, pull it through. So now we have two loops on our hook. And then we're gonna yarn over and pull it through those two. So that is our first stitch. It's a little hard to see, but it'll be easier once we keep going. So we're gonna go into the next one now, which is this one right here. It's a little hard to see. Um, but we're going to go into that one and then we're going to yarn over and pull it through. Now we have two loops and we're going to yarn over, pull it through those two loops. So that is your single crochet. So I'm just pulling it apart now so that way you can see the two distinct stitches. There's one here and one here. So that's what single crochet stitches look like. And now we'll keep going. So we'll go into the next one, which is right here. So we're gonna insert our hook, yarn over that hook, pull it through, yarn over again, and pull it through two loops. So now we have three. So we the first two chains we did, that was just to start our row. We don't include those as part of the stitch. Um, we count these individual ones, or if you even look at the top, one, two, three is what we have now already created. So now we're gonna keep going. I'll do it slow a couple more times and then I'll just finish the row because we're gonna come back and do the same thing again. So we're gonna insert the hook into the next one, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull it through. So we're gonna, we just went into that one, so now we're gonna go into this one. Yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull it through. And if you're having issues inserting your hook and uh, doing the first row, fret not. The first row is always the hardest uh, going into the chains and trying to keep it all straight because as you can see, mine is like trying to twist around. So you just wanna make sure you're trying to keep it as straight as you can as you go. Um, the first row is always the hardest because the chain doesn't always have nice tension. Um, and it can just be a little tricky. Uh, so as you can see, we only have a few left to go. So we're gonna insert our hook, yarn over, pull it through. And make sure you don't miss the very last one where the knot meets. All right, there we go. Now let's count how many stitches we have. So it might be easier to look at the top and count it that way, um, or you can count each individual uh, one that you went into. It's up to you, but we have one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, and that's exactly how many you want. So if you have more or less, then you accidentally dropped a stitch or you accidentally added a stitch, which means you went into the same hole uh, that you already had one in, which is not a big deal. Um, you can just keep going uh, or you can pull it and start over. It is totally up to you. All right, so we're gonna start our next row. Um, so for the first one after the chains, uh, we did we chained two to start, but that was only for the chain row. So now for the next one, what we're gonna do, um, and you can either do it now or you can do it when we flip it over, uh, but to end off that row, you can just chain one. And then we always work right to left. So we're gonna flip it. We're looking at the back now, and then we're gonna go back this way. So we already chained one. Um, so now we're gonna go back into each loop. So this is where it can get a little bit tricky, um, but it's also totally personal preference. So there's a few people that, uh, people do crochet differently, um, but, it, and it just changes the look aesthetically. It doesn't actually matter uh, for the integrity of the item, but it just changes the look aesthetically. So I'll show you what I do and I'll also explain what other people do. Um, so, and, the other thing to note as well is if you follow patterns, it might tell you in the pattern how to make it look a certain way, uh, but I'll just quickly show you here as well. Uh, so as you can see here, we have all of those holes, all of those individual stitches, and this is what it looks like on the top as well, just so you're aware. Um, so technically, if I was doing something, I would consider this the back this look the back, and I would consider this look the front. Um, because we're doing a scarf-like structure, we're gonna be going back and forth the whole time. There's not gonna be a back and front, but for example, when you're doing, like when I do my granny square blanket or when I do other objects, sometimes there is a distinct back and front, front um, but it also doesn't really matter. Um, so the way I like to crochet is I like things to look really clean. Uh, so when I go into the next one, uh, I go under, both of these loops here. So I go right into that, right into the hole there. I go under both loops. Some people will only go under one loop. So I'll show you the difference that makes. So it might be kind of hard to see, but I have two loops here. I like to go under both of them and then I'm doing a single crochet. So I yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull it through. So then it looks like this. And I'll do that a couple times just to show you. So I insert the hook, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull it through. Same thing with the next one. So I'm going under, you can kind of see there's a loop here and there's another one there, but I just go right in the middle. And I just prefer the way this looks. So as you can see, I've done a few there. And that's how it looks. What other people do is they go through just one of them. So you can do like the back or the front. Um, so they only go under one loop. Sorry, the camera is not focusing quite nicely right now. Um, so they go under one loop, then they yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull it through. So then you have this line kind of that gets created. I'll do that a couple more times just to show you the difference. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And we're just gonna go under that one. So you can kind of see here the difference that that makes. So mine are the ones that I prefer to do. Uh, they look like this. There's nothing, there's just holes there in between. Whereas when you do it this way, um, you can kind of see that that yarn is left there now in the middle. I don't know if you can see that super well. It's a, such a slight difference. Um, but yeah, the left three have that, have that yarn that was dropped in the middle, whereas the right three, there's no yarn that's dropped in the middle. Um, and then on this side, you can you can really see the difference that that's gonna make. So the first three that I did, you can't see the yarn, whereas this one, this is now gonna create a line. So if we're only pulling the one loop from the back, 
you're going to have a line in the front where these loops are not being pulled from. Whereas for the first three, I went under both, so you don't see those. It's really just an aesthetic difference. Uh, you can't really tell. I just prefer how this looks. But if you like that better, then go for it. Um, that's totally up to you. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep it the way it is just so you can, you can see the difference. So I'm going to do a couple more where I just pull under one. So I just insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Insert the yarn under one, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. All right, so I did a few like that. So I'm going to go back to the way that I do it. I hope this is not too confusing. Um, so I'm going to go under both and do that. So I go, um, you can kind of see that hole right there is where I'm going, inserting my, my hook. And when you look at it this way, you can see that there's two loops. Um, there's two pieces of yarn there. Whereas when I did it the other way, if you only go through one, there's only one piece of yarn there. But I'm gonna do the two just cause I like how that looks. So we insert it, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull it through. I'm just gonna finish off this row. And then on the last one, you can see here, there's a, only one left. It's a little bit bigger just cause it was a chain and not an actual stitch. So I'm going to do that. All right. And now we have our line. Now we're flipping it over again. We're going to go this way because we have to work right to left. Um, and now you can see the difference that doing the stitch differently made on this side. So from here to here, we went under both. So there's no line. But from here to here, we only went under one. So there is that line where those loops were not included. Might be hard to see that difference um, on the camera. But it's just two different ways of doing it. One is not right or wrong. Um, they're both totally fine. It's just aesthetically what you prefer. I'm going to do this whole row um, the way that I normally crochet just to hopefully prevent any mass confusion or anything. Um, and just so that we can keep going, get a little bit more practice in. So we have two rows now, and now we're gonna do our third row. So we're gonna, I didn't chain on this side, but you can also do it after you flip it. We'll just chain one, just make sure you do chain one. Otherwise you're gonna have, you're gonna start dropping some stitches and it's gonna start creating a triangle and not a rectangle. So we're gonna insert it into the first one here, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull it through. So I'm inserting it in each one of these holes here. That one, that one. I just prefer the way it looks. I find it looks really clean, especially when um, I'm creating stuffed animals and things. I just like how the single crochets look that way. Go quickly for a few and then I'll slow down again. All right. So for the last ones, we're gonna insert, yarn over, pull it through one loop, yarn over, pull it through two loops. Insert the yarn, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull it through. So that's what we have. And then you could chain here and then flip it over or you could flip it over and then chain. Kind of pull it apart here so you can see where I just 
where I just did my stitch. So now we're gonna do the next one in this one. Yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull it through. So that's how it looks so far. And I'll just show you. So this is how it'll look after you complete three different rows. And then once you're finished, you just rip off the end and then you have your loop. The great thing about crocheting is you don't need to do anything to finish. You just pull the yarn through, pull it tight and that's it. So once you finish, there's no ending stitches or casting off or anything like that. If you're used to knitting, you just break off the yarn and pull it through the loop. So I'll show you again with this one as well. I'll just finish this row and then we'll do that. Uh, what I do as well is if I'm not crocheting for a while, I'll just pull the loop out really long so that way it doesn't accidentally get pulled through. Um, and then you just tighten it again when you're ready to start again. Again, not too tight so that you can't get the yarn through. So we're just gonna keep going. So I'm gonna insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. And we're just gonna keep doing that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, I hope the tutorial was useful. I haven't ever done a video tutorial like this before. I mostly do it in person so people can ask me questions and get clarification on certain steps. I hope I went through everything pretty thoroughly and I hope I didn't confuse anyone too, too much. Um, but I, I really appreciate your feedback. Just let me know what you thought, what I could do better or what you enjoyed. Um, and that way I can make better ones in the future. So here we're finished. Say we're finished, uh, our scarf or say we're going to make a blanket out of all these strips. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take our yarn because this is wool. If this is acrylic, we would not be able to do this, but it's wool. So we can just break it. And then uh, I do it with my hook just because it's easy and we just pull that yarn through what we just did and pull it tight. Um, sometimes when I'm ending too, I'll just do an extra chain just to kind of create a knot at the end, uh, but it doesn't really matter. And then obviously we would weave this end through so that it would disappear and same with this other end. But yeah, so that is uh, the basics, how you chain and do a single crochet. I'm probably going to do a little granny square tutorial next, uh, how to create something like this for blankets. Um, I think they're super easy and they're a great way to learn a few different things uh, when you're going to do crochet. Uh, but if you want to make a scarf or anything like that, uh, that's how I started out 12 years ago. My grandmother showed me how to crochet and I made a scarf that was all single crochet like this. Uh, and I really loved it and I still love doing crochet today, but thank you guys so much for watching uh, and let me know what you think.